Welcome back to the Fox's Den. I am so excited because this is my first official um, adventure um, video since, or vlog rather, since the summer. And I have weird things to share in this haul. When I look back at what I was sharing in the haul last year, or in the hauls last year, it's totally different than this year, but of course, life is different now. All right, I'm so excited that you're joining. All right, so I am in my office wearing my favorite shirt that my sister made me. I'll have to show it to you later. It is something I wore when I went and dro drove around with my partner and we put the fifth grade graduation signs up. It's so cute. But anyway, I may have shown it to you, but I'll show it to you again. And I am in my office and yes, I don't, I hope you can see, right? I don't have any um, shade or anything up right now. I'm just sitting on my little, my little lounging couch. All right, so I want to start off with these picture books. So many picture books. And I do teach fifth grade. And I'm telling you, there is so much that you can do. I'm actually going to do a series with picture books and show you what I've been doing. But there is so much that you could do. And there's so many cool books out there about learning how to cope with anxiety, about kindness, and just about subject material. So I've got fiction and nonfiction. And these are my favorite books right now. And I'm all excited to share them with you. Okay, give me one minute and I'll grab them all. So, of course, you can get all these on Amazon. One of the first books I'm going to share is called Breathe. Okay. And um, Breathe is, I'll put all the information um, in the description below. Breathe is a book about just breathing, taking, you know, a minute to learn how to self-care and relax I was first turned on to this because this book was recommended by my one of my favorite charities, which is to help children with um, airway disorders, and it's on the wish list, and I bought a whole bunch of them to send to them because they make these care packages for the parents that have little babies and children with these airway disorders, and they spend an awful lot of time in the hospital with them. So the Breathe has sort of like a double meaning for them but also it helps you to just breathe and relax i'm going to show you some some of the pages they're really nice and i'm just going to read to you the back and what it says it says mom i can't sleep why not i don't know i'm nervous and i can't stop thinking 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 sound familiar right do you want me to teach you how to breathe breathe but i already know how to breathe but have you ever stopped to see how you do it? Where the air comes in and out. If it fills more of your belly or your chest, if you are doing it slowly or quickly. And breathe is a conversation between a boy and his mother at bedtime. But this conversation can happen at any time in any place. This introduction to mindfulness presents a collection of illustrated exercises to help little ones become aware of their breath and their body. And it includes a note to parents and caregivers that describes the exercises and their effects in more detail. We started to learn about breathing towards the, um, well, the end of last year. It really wasn't the end of last year, it looks like I had to go out in the rain with the dog. Anyway, it was um, like in February-ish, which was kind of like the end of before we had to go on remote learning. Anyway, the book is amazing. And I'll show you those um, pictures that they were talking about. I mean, it's real. Look, look at this. You see that? It is a very cool book. Okay. So that's my first one in the haul. Oh my gosh, I have so many. All right, now we come up to this. Oh, we read the novel Behind Rebel Lines. It's one of our core novels. It's the last one. We usually do one per marking period. It's the last marking period. And it is about um, Emma Edmonds. It's from her memoirs. She um, was Canadian born, but she actually comes and lives in America. And she decides to fight in the Civil War. And she has to disguise herself as a, as a man. So she is a nurse. She is um, then becomes a spy and she's a messenger. She is amazing. And um, the book is really good. It's called Emma Edmonds. But this picture book is amazing. One of my, I discovered it and I bought one for myself, but I also bought one for one of my students who fell in love with the, uh, the novel. And oh my, it has, it's cute. It says nurse, soldier, um, spy. 
and Civil War hero. And it is a true story. And it starts off with how she cuts her beautiful long hair and dresses up to become a uh, Union soldier. And um, her adventures as a, you know, healing people, but also uh, um, her adventures as um, a spy. Cuff is one of our favorites right here as Cuff. And it brings up a lot of information that you could share with the kids. It's a great, great picture book. It's really great. And you could do it with the novel itself too, behind Rebel Lines. Okay, love this. Okay, another book that I love, because I have this whole rainbow theme thing going on, is by Don Freeman. And I love Don Freeman. My ultimate book from when I was a little girl is Corduroy. And he writes a book about um, a rainbow of my own. And what I love about this story is that it shows, you know, the rainbow comes after the big storm. So with every challenge, Things might look terrible, something terrible could happen, but there's a beauty that comes out of it and an inner strength, and that's what this book is about. Now, if you're reading it to little ones, they might not get that concept, but I love picture books for older children, and they will get that concept, and this book is great for figurative language. Um, let's see if I could, all right, I don't wanna really read it because I didn't ask for permission, but I'll read tiny little pieces. Um, let's see. I put on my raincoat and hat and ran outdoors. Fast as the wind, I ran. So right there is figurative language. And there's so much you could do with science. I definitely will be doing a companion video that goes with this, that goes with this story, figurative language and science and how it all relates with, you know, ELA and science. Love, love this book. This is a nonfiction book. This was in one of our, um, when we used to have a different reading program and we used to have like a, that's not basil reader. I mean, that's an old, old word, but um, sort of like a literacy book and it was in there, but my students love this book. I love it. It's lyrical. It is informational. However, it begins and ends with the story. So you could even use this with um in writing how a story starts the same and ends the same but it's like that lyrical writing this book is filled with gorgeous language beautiful pictures i'm going to show you some it's called the everglades and then i this also is great to use um i do biomes in science and this is one of the best books ever. But there's so much in here, the vocabulary, the things. Again, I will be doing a companion video about this. But it starts off with, um, with this picture, which I love. Okay? And it says... The storyteller pulled the children under arching trees into a sunny water glade. He sat down and leaned toward them. I'm going to tell you a story, he said. It is not a story about a person or a mythical creature. It is not even a story about an animal. Okay. The children looked at each other and waited. It's a story about a river. And then when you get to the end of the story, it's kind of the same way here. And then he says, five children and a storyteller pulled into the Everglades. Eventually the children grew up and ran the earth. And I'm not going to read any more than that. And sandwiched in between is all the beauty and the history of like, this is the sawgrass. And each, each picture here has a beautiful picture of um, an animal or an insect that's found in or a plant that is found in the Everglades. And the language is, is just gorgeous. A multitude of panthers, raccoons, deer, and otter came to the river, and they made their homes on the beautiful islands. A plentitude of orchids bloomed and turned the island trees into colorful cathedral windows. And then we talk about what a cathedral window is, and I show them, and they're like, oh my goodness, and they imagine all those orchids and how it looks like that. Listen to this vocabulary word, a plethora of lizards, and the gnolls clambered over the orchids and 2,000 kinds of plants, including palms, vines, bushes, grasses, and trees. So the language is just beautiful. Okay, it's a must. All right, next, this is new to me. I'm not just a scribble. 
And what I love about it is that, you know, the knot part is in there. And even though, I mean, there's a lot going on about being inclusive and including people and valuing what a human life is, regardless of your race or sex or your age, um, your heritage, just to value and to consider all of us equal. And even though it doesn't really come right out and say this, which is good for maybe the younger kids, the older children, you can analyze this and you could um, do a whole big lesson on this. And it says, this is a story about Scribble whose lines would cross and wiggle. Tiny loops would start him small. Bigger swirls would make him tall. Okay. And of course, I don't have permission to read all of this, but as it goes on, it, it just shows that um, how he's not being included but in the end, how he does have something to add. Like on this page, it says, we're so sorry, said the clouds as they held back their tears. Please come play, said the house. We haven't had fun in years. So it's like they're learning their lesson as the story goes on because he was not included all along. I love it. It is a great book. There's actually more that go with it. Snippets, splatter, invisible scribble, sticks and stones. There's like a whole collection. I forget where I got this. I think I actually picked this up. I think, I don't think I ordered on Amazon. I may have gotten this at Target. Okay. Next is another rainbow book because I'm doing a rainbow theme and it says black is a rainbow color. And there is so much you can do with this besides it being a current, you know, topic of being inclusive and in considering everything beautiful. It could also um, have to do with art. But look, look how the inside is black. I love it. And um, I'm just going to read just a few, few pages. Okay. Red is a rainbow color. Green sits next to blue. Yellow, orange, violet, indigo. They are rainbow colors too. But my color is black. And there's no black in rainbows. And look how beautiful this artwork is. And look at the beautiful little girl sitting there. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? And I'll just read one more little piece. Black is a crayon tangled in a box. Black is a feather on white winter snow. Black is the dirt where sunflowers grow. My color is black. And then it goes on. And it teaches a lesson about how black is part of the rainbow and why. And um, when you get to the very end, Look at the beauty in the artwork of that. It says, so you see there is no black in rainbows, no black in green or blue, but in my box of crayons, black is a rainbow too. And there's like a whole lesson that goes along with it. And um, what's really neat is at the end, it says black is a rainbow color playlist. So these are um, different songs that are in the back and um, there is an author's note. On a chilly Tennessee evening, I gathered my children on the reading bench for what would be their first Black History Month lesson. The music I'd carefully selected was playing in the background. Age appropriate picture books were on hand. Mental notes were sharp and inspired and I was ready. But before I could get a good start, my daughter looked at me with an air of preschool superiority and said, but mama, we're not black, we're brown. <laughs> and then she goes on to tell the rest of the story. And there's that beautiful list of music. So there's a whole magnitude of teaching lesson in here. I love it when music's involved and you could play it in the background for the kids. And um, there's more information in the back. This is a fabulous book. It is, I'm telling you, it is, it is a must. And you know what I loved? Her last name is Joy. Angela Joy, or that's what she's going by as her pen name. So it is a book that I strongly suggest you get. All right, I need a drink. Isn't this pretty? It was given to me as a gift. All right, up next. Teach your dragon about diversity. And there's a whole slew of these. And this book is adorable. And I love it because the dragon is sweet. And we're dragons. We're, 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 we are. That's our um, mascot. 
Hello, my name is Drew, and just wait till you hear this. I have a dragon for a pet, and you want to, and you don't want to miss the chance to hear a story of my dragon, Diggory Do, and the lesson that he learned that we want to share with you. And of course, I'm not going to read the whole thing because I don't have permission, but it is about diversity and it is in a fun way and it is great for younger children, but it is always also great for older children because you can always look for, um, if in this case, not figurative language, but for, you know, bigger meanings. And it is really, really cute. Look, one of the pages says Amber has long and uh, Amber's hair is long and blonde while Anne is shiny black. Carla's curly hair of brown tumbles down her back. Some have hair of pumpkin orange like Patty, Sue, and Paul. I have no hair at all. Diggory rubbed his head and said, I have no hair at all. Neither do I. Okay. So it's just adorable. And it's about diversity and how things are different, but in a fun and cute way. Love this book. And it's a series too. All right. And then, oh my gosh, this is beautiful. So, um, I always try to, I have a wall and I'll show you right after this. I'm going to pause and I'm going to show you right now. Okay. So I have this, this wall or this door decorated in my classroom of people who are inspiring and they've done an amazing things. And, um, as you can see, it's a collection of different men and women of ages and race and sexuality. And, um, I just refer back to them all of the time and with my students. And I always try to, I know what books they like and what are things that they love and promote, um, the people on the wall. And so I always incorporate it in our class so we can always come back to it. And so it's very inspiring. And Ellen, as you can see, is on the wall and she loves um, animals. And because of that, that is how I wound up getting this book, Strictly No Elephants. So when I'm talking about Ellen, we refer back to that. And um, this book, look at that. The artwork is gorgeous. And it talks about not being inclusive. And when I read the book, it always makes me emotional. But I'm just going to read tiny pieces because, again, I don't have permission. The trouble with having a tiny elephant for a pet is that you never fit in or you never quite fit in. So right away, the conflict is in the story, which I teach to my children about that, how to plot. And you can use this for plotting. And so the conflict is, boom, it's right there, you know, up front. And um, it says, no one else has an elephant. Every day I take my elephant for a walk. He is a very thoughtful, he, his is a very thoughtful sort of walk. And he talks about all the beauty in him and how he tries to do all kinds of beautiful He's things. such a kind soul and it doesn't work. And then um, she, he comes across a young girl who has a skunk as a pet. And they decide together to have their own club. And um, what I love about this is they have a sign, right? And they kept coming up where they were had these signs that didn't include them. So they cross all that out. And one of the things it says is, we can play here, one of our new friends says, all of us. So we paint our own sign. And they cross out strictly, no strangers, no sto spoil sports. And instead what they write is, all are welcome. And the things in here, the language is beautiful because it says stuff like, um, my tiny elephant will give you directions if you need them because that's what friends do. And all are welcome no matter what. And that is what she, they say, that's what friends do. That's what friends do. Pick you up. Um, it talks about how the elephant's afraid of the cracks and he allows, you know, time for the elephant to, to you know, Take, embrace the fear and then eventually try to get over it because that's what friends do support each other and I love this because we read a story called wonder and my children can make a connection where um 
they sit at a table at the lunch table and they talk about who's allowed to sit at the table and who they're going to include because they're excluded. And in the end, they would really include anybody that was kind. You know, it, it's really a great little comparison. But I love this book. It's a good one. Okay, so those are all my books. Now, I feel like I talk too much. Now, I am going to get into some weird things that I have in my hall. Okay. So, um, I don't know about you, but um, I have been collecting, and my sister especially, all kinds of hand, different, different kinds of hand sanitizers. And in a totally different video, I'm gonna show you a little kit, like a caddy that I'm making up for my students with all their things in it. And I'm going to include different kinds of hand sanitizers. So I'm gonna show you some really cool things. Some you might already know, and some you may not. So I'm gonna start off with something you probably do know. So you can get and my sister sort of has it on a rotation, you can get from um, Bath and Body Works, you know, different scented um, hand sanitizers. They come in packages. And what I love about this, these are, they are the right percentage of um, alcohol, but I love the this one. This one is strawberry pound cake. Oh my God. But they have citrusy like sunshine and lemon. They have vanilla coconut. They even have more of a masculine scent too. But if you are too sensitive with smells, then I suggest you don't use that. I've got something else. Now, this company I really like. Let me grab it. Okay. So this company here is called Hello Bello. And they make it in a gel, a, a tall gel. And when you rub it on your hands, it is not sticky, which I love. But they make a great spray. I love spray hand sanitizer. Why? Because, you know, you could spray your hands and they don't smell at all. But here's why I love it. So I have a lot of, and I'm going to put this in my haul. I have a lot of um, washable face masks. And so when you're out and about with this face mask and you have to have it on like me for hours now as a teacher, what you should do is because you don't have time to wash it, you know, it's the outside that you want to protect. You can take your hand sanitizer and not when it's on your face, spray the outside and then you can put it on or have it hang up and air out until you have to put it on. So I love the hand spray sanitizer and I have a ton of that. So this one is Hello Bella, Bello, and it lasts. Again, the, the wet one is good too. And another one that I love is this one. It is hand sanitizer and it is um, by Pink, which is uh, Victoria's Secret. And they make this cozy little rubbery, easy to wash the thing you put in. You slip it in here, it has a little handle. You can clip it anywhere and I love this. This is great. So I have tons of this. All right, so what else do I have? You can also get a, a spray hand sanitizer with a scent by Bath & Body Works. This one is Citrus Sunshine, and I do like this. They have all kinds of scents. This works too, but again, if you don't like the scented, there are these other options. And you wanna do that little spray trick I was teaching you about. Okay, the other thing that I have, which comes from really good stuff, and I have tons of these. My sister bought these for me during Teacher Appreciation Week and I stockpiled them. And she spoils me. She does all kinds of shopping for me and I don't even know it. And then she's like, here, take this home. Okay, I'm fighting to get this out, I'm sorry. Okay, so these are little um, wet wipes and they have 10 in them. And these are great because they're lightweight. They can fit in a little caddy for the kids. Um, you can put them in your purse. So I bought a whole bunch of these. Again, I will link all of this in the description below. So I've got tons and tons of these. And I have one more thing I want to show you with hand sanitizers. Okay. So, actually two more things. Clorox makes these. These are great to keep in your car. Of course, you can't give these to the kids, but these are great to keep in your car, um, your purse, take them with you. And then they're gonna be great to use in the classroom too. And then 
I always keep these around anyway, and then they have the, a thinner, smaller, a thinner version that you could put in your purse. I always, always have these, but you really need them now. So you wanna wipe off your hands, and then you want to um, use your hand sanitizer. I have to tell you that you have to be careful. You, it's best to wash your hands with soap and water, as most of you know, but when you use too much hand sanitizer, then you become like a germ magnet. So there, these things are good to use in between before you can wash your hands. And you know, I have a sink in my classroom and I have always beautiful smelling soap and my students love it. And there's all these great smells out right now at Bath & Body Works, so you should get that if you can. All right, so that's all my hand sanitizer haul stuff and and wipes and all of that and i've been collecting and collecting and don't forget about that spray trick i was showing you okay so now i'm going to show you all the different masks now you i will link it below to all, all the different kinds we've got masks from all over so give me one minute um what i'm showing you is for adults but i have one for all the girls too so it it is oh, they come in children's sizes too and they're washable so old navy you get it like in a pack like this and they're cool and i'll show you all the different because i want them to match my outfits and it has the elastic that's really soft and it's fits on your face easily it's very nice and then i have just plain gray i have camo and then the dark green camo these are great for boys and girls and leopard okay all right, then, and they're washable, and these are Old Navy, and I like them. They're more squarish. And then we have um, Vera Bradley, and this is Vera Bradley's, okay, all fancy dancy. Now, Vera Bradley also has an insert if you would like to put, you know, some people like to put some kind of a filter. There you go. It's big. This one is really big. That's a Vera Bradley. And then I have, this is homemade. This one is made by um, a student of mine. And I'm not going to put her name or her link on there. But you, if you want one from her, you can always send me a memory. Disastrous hair. You can always send me a message and I'll ask. And she did it because I'm the fox, little foxes. And then on the back matches my classroom. But this is what I wanted to show you about hers. Hers is my favorite because even though the elastic is soft and it lays on my ear, it must lay on a nerve and it actually feels achy and it hurts after a while. But hers is made with leggings. This material comes from leggings and I've washed this a million times and it holds up nicely and I love it because it's so soft on my ear. All right, then... We have So Loved, which is our Deborah. She's from the Fox's Den, and um, she's amazing. And she's been making these, and we donated. She donated a ton. And this one she did patriotic for us, and her bands look like this. But I have Leopard from her, Princesses. I will put her link below. Amazing, okay? And she also is the one that lets you put the filter inside. Okay, this one has sparkles. She's making me lacy ones right now. Ones, not a word, lacy, lacy example. Okay, now I have to tell you, I love this. This is by Steve Madden. It fits so nicely and it has a little wire in it to go over your nose and there's all kinds and you can adjust here how tight or loose you want it and you can also put a filter. You probably can't see that from far away, a filter in it. So you can adjust and you can put a filter in. And these are by Steve Madden. Oh, love, this is, this is, this is my, like, one of my favorites. Okay, so there's my haul, okay? So we, we've been getting them from everywhere. All right, something else I wanna show you that's really cute is this reading log I found. I bought it because it was on sale and it's a great inspiration for me because I'm gonna do something like this with the kids. Because I don't know about you, I'm from New Jersey and um, we are only one of, what is it? There are 43 states that do not meet the CDC guidelines, but they're still opening. Like Arizona, they shouldn't be opening their schools because they don't meet the guidelines in Florida on all them. New Jersey is one that is meeting it and we are opening, but that's of now in New York. But anyway, we're going to be on a hybrid schedule and I'm trying to think of creative ways, you know, to hold kids accountable, but I want them to enjoy. And we've been doing a lot with the whole thing about doodling and I'll do a video on that too. But, um, this is cool.
because you make a list and it has places for notes. This is really nice. I love this. And I'm not even sure where I got it. There's like no information on the inside to even tell me like copyright stuff. There is an ISBN number, but I love this. Really cool. So I'm going to create something for the kids with this. All right. Alrighty. Now, something else real quick. I had purchased this. Actually, I wanted this as a gift and I got it from uh, a parent and Grace and her family. Thank you. And I could use this with the kids. So these are warm-ups. And if you're doing your Zoom meeting, you could use them. But there's all kinds of cool things in here. So let me read to you some of them. It says, put students in small groups and have them make a list of 50 excuses for laughing. Examples, my socks don't match. Jerry wiggles his eyebrows, watching YouTube and so on. Post the list in the classroom. You can still do this in your Zoom meetings, especially or your, we don't even use Zoom, I use Google Meet, especially if you have to start the school year off virtually, getting to know each other, making little rooms and then chatting with each other and starting to working with this. It's easy. Have students think of their favorite song and write new lyrics for a verse on the whole song. The new lyrics can be funny, inspirational, personal, or sad. Ask your volunteers to sing the lyrics so I mean just to build a community to get to love each other and know each other so I don't know about you and I don't have the official total schedule but I know we're only going to be in school the minimal amount and when we're in school I want to use that time when we're seeing each other if it's like one day a week or two days a week I want to use that time to build relationships because it's hard to build a relationship through Google Meet, even though I love you, Google. So these, I think, will be cool. I'm going to somehow incorporate them in. These are nice. I got these from Amazon. They were on my wish list, and like I said, a parent bought them for me. So, of course, I will link this below. It's They're good. They're good. They're good. They're worth it. All right. Hold on, here we go. Now, this is gonna seem weird and I'll explain more of it in another video, which I keep saying, but here we go. So, when I read to the student, oh, let me move back here. So, when I read to the students, um, like doing a read aloud or I do, um, you know, like I model good reading to them, they um, are taking notes. And I usually have this paper that rolls out across the tables and it rolls out on the floor. And we put the caddies out and they stretch and they doodle. And there's a whole thing behind our doodling. They can, it, we call them graffiti. It's, it, they are graffiti tables or graffiti paper. And they can draw what they're feeling, a connection that they make. They can draw a question that they have, a word that stands out to them, um, something they like, dislike. We can talk about signposts. We can talk about, you know, um, the plotting of the story. Where's the climax? Whatever you want. A characterization. Whatever it is, they can just doodle away. And I want to be able to continue that. And we won't be able to do that. I mean, I don't know about your state, but in our state, we won't. So I have to think of everything in an individual way. So this is register tape. I was able to get a ton of it and then I got it on my, put it on my shopping list for at school for, um, you know, our classroom supplies. Now, most of the tape is um, heated and uh, thermal rather, and it should not be touched. There's BPA issues and all that stuff. But this is the old fashioned, just regular paper kind. Look how thick that roll is. And you can pull it out and you can write on it. And you could do the same thing, but in a mini version. So the kids can lay it across their desk and they could keep continuing until we want to cut it off and we can lay it out and we can all see and we could share it that way. So this is one of my creative ideas and I got a ton of it. And then when I was shopping around, I was like, hmm, Hmm, let's see that what this is. I didn't know how cost effective this would be, but this is called the doodle roll. And that's actually one of the technical terms we use is doodling. So it's built in and it's re, it's a built-in dispenser and the dispenser is reusable and it's by Play School. And they come with um, some markers and stuff. Anyway, this one, you actually could pull out the paper. Hold on, let me do that right now. So it lays in here and it comes with crayons and stuff and you can pull it out. So it's another roll, but it's a little bigger. It's not as much, but it's wider. 
okay? And this was, I got this on sale for three bucks. Now you're probably thinking, three bucks, I got 10, just 10 kids, that's $30 or whatever. Use your school, um, you know, supply money if you get any. And if you don't, it's okay. It's just a suggestion. You know, maybe you could put it on there and parents would want to buy it. You know, I got it off of Amazon. You could actually go to the place. It's um, a website that Play School has and it was in there. You don't have to get the whole set, just the roll itself. But I thought it was a really good deal. But this was more economical because I have 40 students. Okay, so I went with this. All right. So that's my haul. It's weird, isn't it? But it has some really good stuff in it. And literally, it has really good stuff in it. And I will talk to you uh, more about some of the ideas I had that I promised I keep saying I would. And I know I'm rambling and I'm hyper because it just came off of this big meeting I had um, about, you know, going back to school and uh, what we should be looking for. It was by the NEA, which is for all of us. The National Education Association. That's how I was able to tell you that there are only, there are 43 states that should not be opening because they are not following the, the CDC guidelines. And I know some of you are not, you know, unionized and we are here in New Jersey, but you need to get informed because, you know, it's a scary situation out there. Um, anyway, I'm going to end this video by saying thank you for tuning into the Fox's Den in my adventure. I will be back with more stuff. I'm so excited because I took a long break. All right, you have a good one and you wash your hands and you wear your mask and you stay safe. All right, see you later. Bye.